What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Other Guys on the Badlands Podcast Network. I am your host, Jake Chatsky, joined as always by my co-host, Paul Kilgallen. The Jets are coming off of an ass-whooping of the New England Patriots. That one felt great to watch, and they are two and one. Paul, how you doing? How you feeling? No, oh, it was fantastic. It uh we're what are we, five days later now, and it hasn't really gotten old. Uh it was a good weekend uh, to be a New York sports fan, uh, especially if you're a Jets and Mets fan. Mets rolled through the Phillies, um, and and back to the Jets. The reason we're here, like you know, just to to put on that kind of display on national TV is so long overdue. We've been on the other side of those ass whoopings so many times um, that to do it against that opponent on a national broadcast uh, with Roger, like it's just God. It was. How much fun was that? Um, functional offense, defense really gave nothing up other than a long penalty. That's how they got their points. And so, Jesus, what a fun game. It was awesome. It was an incredible win to watch. Some people were more confident going into it than others. I was certainly on the other side of that uh, on this pod. Like, I, you know, I listened back to last week and I wasn't, uh, you know, super confident even coming off of a win. Uh, and it was so nice to see the Jets put together a complete game, put together a game that showcased like the ceiling we were all hoping for in the offseason with an incredible defensive performance, competent quarterback play, excellent quarterback play from Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you know, the, the offensive line looking as good as it did uh, for them. You mentioned this for them to do it in prime time, which historically, like we talked, we talked about this earlier on the podcast, like if the Jets are in prime time, I'm going to shit my pants. Like nothing makes me more nervous than seeing that. And they had, you know, the eyes of the world upon them and just took care of business. And there's something about beating the Patriots that just feels better. Obviously, like, you know, Tom's not there anymore. Belichick's not there anymore. It's not the same Patriots team. And we knew that, but to go from sending Belichick off on his final game as the Patriots coast with a loss to the Jets to there being this new era of Patriots football and it's starting on this note is just nothing could have been better for Jets fans. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. And remember, last week we recorded on Monday. We were coming off what we all wanted to be a convincing big win on the heels of the loss in San Francisco, and it wasn't. It was not as convincing as we wanted it to be. There was a Will Levis brain fart that gave us points. There was, you know, a long pass that probably should have been intercepted. There was a season ending injury like that. It was a tough game. Right. And combine that with the fact that the first two weeks, the Patriots looked pretty squirrely. Like, I don't think anybody expects them to be very good. I actually have a ticket with DraftKings for them to have the worst record in the NFL. Like I thought they were going to stink. And the first two weeks, they didn't stink. They went toe-to-toe with the Bengals. They hung with Seattle until overtime. And so we came into that Monday, like, with just the last 25 years of Patriots nonsense hanging over us after not a, really a great game, although a win in Tennessee. And um, and I think, yeah, like, we, we kind of talked our way through it. And as the week went on, I think you and I both got a little bit more confident. And then obviously by the time Thursday came, um, I was very, very, very confident um, that they were going to win and cover. And so, yeah, just a ton of fun. And like you said, like to, to end Bill with a loss and then to start off the new regime with a loss, it just like feels good. It feels like the page might be fully turned at this point. And for all the stats that we see every time the Jets are on national TV, like they've you know, they haven't, you know, won a game or they're uh, nine out of the last 10 have been losses or whatever it is. There's always jet stats every time the Jets are on national television about some historic streak of ineptitude that they have going on. And now for once, like we can get a streak going against the Patriots, maybe like let's make it three in a row later this year. And then like, let's see how long we can hold them without beating us. And so it feels like the page has turned from that. Um, and like, You know, the division, I mean, whatever. We've been saying for months on here that Miami stinks and Miami's a paper tiger and now without their quarterback and obviously you hope Tua is okay, but like they don't have a backup plan. It's it's amazing actually how much Miami looks like us last year where just like they did not have any plan for anything beyond like the primary plan, right? And when that got a hole in it, 
all of a sudden you're scrambling. The offensive line looks terrible. You can't protect the guy who's not even good anyway. And to top it all off, Tim Boyle comes in, right? So it's it's actually eerie how much what Miami's going through right now looks like what we had to deal with last year. But to get back to the Jets-Patriots game, so much goddamn fun. Um, just to sit there comfortably. And somebody said it to me on Twitter, like, it's – you get so used to watching the Jets where like you have that sense of doom on your shoulder the whole time. Like it's a long third down. You're like, oh my God, here comes the draw play up the middle, right? And they looked so good through the first part of that game on Thursday night that in the second half, like they would have a third and medium or even a third and long, like third and 14. And you just be like, Rogers is going to find somebody downfield, dude. Like he's going to roll out. He's going to buy some time. He's going to flick one down the field. And consistently, like he would hold the ball for seven to eight seconds and then flick one down and be like, wow, Conklin found a soft spot in the zone. He's wide open 25 yards down the field. And the thing that I kept saying to myself and to my friends was like, is this what it feels like to just be confident in your offense? And going back to what somebody said to me on Twitter, they were like, it's like watching UConn basketball where like when the, when something doesn't look great, you have trust that your team is going to figure it out and, and move the ball and do the right thing. And man, it's fun to watch a football game like that. It felt like I was watching a different sport last Thursday than the sport I've been watching for the last 15 years. Yeah. I had the exact same parallel thought. I think I even tweeted something about it, like where, it's wild watching a football team where you have confidence on third down. Like I've just been so used to, especially the last five years. Like if third down comes around, you're like, Oh fuck, here we go again. Like you are just hoping that it is either third and one or like, and even then you're like, what fucking run player are we about to call that? Everyone's predicting. Uh, you're just hoping to convert on first and second down or that some sort of magic can happen. And now we have full confidence in our team, even if it's like a third and seven that like we got a good shot at moving the chains here and keeping a consistent drive going. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers on Thursday night looked like MVP Aaron Rodgers and not just like the decisiveness in the past game, but he was mobile, which coming off of his injury is a massive blessing, especially like, you know, Kirk has looked better through two weeks, but when you compare and obviously his injury came a lot later, but like, when you compare the two, it's like Rodgers, is, it's night and day. And he had a weird moment with Robert Sala in the middle of the game where after the fact, you know, talking about it, it just seemed like two dudes firing each other up, nothing to see there. And like with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, you're going to get those headlines. But if the play on the field is that, I don't give a fuck about any of the distractions. Like, yes, why can't we just be normal? But, like, to see Aaron Rodgers and the way he looked like on Thursday night, you will take that good with the bad every time. Totally. And, like, live and, and like, immediately, like, Barstool picked it up. And then, like, people were adding John Boy to, like, get a lip reading on what he was saying. And I think everybody thought he was saying it's too early, meaning, like, don't hug me, right? It's the, it's the second quarter. Back off. But – their explanation made perfect sense. I was like tuned into the post game interviews thinking like, all right, the jets are about to PR the disaster themselves. Like they always do where they take something that could have been explained easily and they make it worse by putting out some like contrived story about what actually happened. But Sal and Rogers both said the exact same thing. And it was like pretty benign. Like, it was just about this whole two score lead thing. And then like you go back and you look at the video and you can see on his lips, he's saying two score lead. Right. And they totally explained it away. It was not a big deal at all. So even that, like, you know, not that that was going to put a damper on, on the win and how good it was, but like, even that was handled the right way, which is great. Yeah. And, you know, talking more about the offensive side of the football, uh, one of the things we missed on last week, which just hand up as a big miss, is the play of the offensive line. The newly reconstructed offensive line has been fantastic so far, especially when it comes to pass protection. Rodgers had all day out there to pick the Patriots apart, and he did just that. But the thing I think we need to, you know, I'll, I'll knock myself down and pick myself up. The thing we should pat ourselves on the back on is from day one, we have loved the Olu Fashionu pick. And there were plenty of Jets haters on Twitter 
who said, why are we picking a backup with the first first round pick? Uh, you know, it's going to be the same thing as Will McDonald last year where he wasn't really used at all. This is a waste of a pick for a win now team. This team is winning now and stable now because of that pick. And I think it needs to be called out in real time how we are. We knew it would come. We knew we had said, even if it's just for, you know, two or three games that he will get some starting opportunities. And now it's here. And I feel very solid about not only the pick, but the offensive line as a whole. Yeah, it's here sooner than we thought it would be. Um, And it's not it's not great that we that Morgan Moses went down. I think it looks a lot better now than it did live when he was writhing around on the ground. I think everybody was thinking the worst immediately, but got up, walked off, um, ends up being like a three to four week thing. And the same thing that we said then applies now, which is essentially like this was the grown up pick, right? It's not as sexy as Brock Bowers, who looks like a bona fide NFL player. Um, it's not as fun as if they went up and got a wide receiver or something like that, but it is the grown up pick. It was the right thing to do. And yeah, I mean, the offensive line looks like it's starting to gel. Um, I, I felt like Tyron, like eye test wise, didn't look as good in the third game as he had the previous two games. But, um, you look at some of like the advanced stats around time to release and different things like that. Like they are protecting the guy, they're giving the guy a pocket. And that's another thing that we're just not used to seeing as Jets fans, you were talking about converting on third down. The other thing is like time to throw. Like there is, there is every time Aaron Rodgers drops back, there is a legitimately formed pocket around him. And we're just not used to seeing that. It usually looks like warfare back there and the quarterback scrambling and trying to slip out as quickly as possible. And we have to manufacture rollouts because we know that the pocket's not going to develop and different things like that. And some of the things, like even the things that, people have been saying negatively about the Jets for the first three weeks, which is like, obviously week one, it was the run defense. And then week two, I think most people were still saying they didn't look great against Pollard and Tajay Spears, but there were a couple people who were like, no, it looks significantly improved. Same deal for offensive line where like we weren't sure week two, but then week three, it was pretty solid. And so like not to go back to the thing that everybody keeps saying about the preseason, because it's kind of a tired old take at this point, but like, it, it seems like it matters. Like maybe these first three games were, or the first two games even were like preseason ish for most of the jet starters. And now here they are, they're kind of firing on all cylinders by week three and um, everything looks good. And, and to your point, like, man, fashion what a great smart pick. Um, I think font might be out for the year already. So even like not even just picking the offensive line, but like picking the right guy right now, obviously it's still early. Um, but everything seems to be working out and, and hopefully Moses can get back and then we, we can get back to having that depth, right? It's it's great to use the depth right now, but at, at some point I want to get back to having the depth. So No, that's a that's a great call out. And obviously, like um, you know, this was best case scenario for the injury, like you said. Um, and it is great that we have that depth piece and hopefully we can reload. One last thing on the Patriots game before we move on. Um, we just got to call out the defense not only has been playing fantastic for that entire game, but they've been playing lights out for the last six quarters. And I think defensive production year to year in the NFL can be extremely volatile. And we rightfully, I think, had some questions about, you know, just assuming that the defense was going to either take another step forward or maintain that top five status and that being the blueprint for this team. But this was a game where they really put all the pieces together together. Will McDonald has, you know, continued to ascend and take that year to leap like we had talked about with him being in a bigger role. It's been awesome to see. And yeah, there were just a lot of key plays all over the defense and the defense being who they thought we were. Um, And so hopefully that continues for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And not only that, I, I was really impressed with the way that the defense made a customized game plan for what they were facing. Um, we've talked a lot about how this defense is not necessarily exotic and exciting in terms of the pressure they put on. They kind of just line up and beat you with talent um, and they're predicated on pass rush and they usually just rush four. and the goal is to get home and then also lock down on the back end and have kind of good enough linebacker play. And that's not what they were doing on Thursday night. They were, they were simulating pressure. They were coming at you from different angles. They sent Chuck Clark a couple times. They sent cornerbacks a couple times. 
And, you know, our, our resident insider here, Will, said that he heard that, like, the, the team had a lot of fun with it. Like, they were jazzed up about the fact that they were getting to rush in kind of exotic different ways. And I think that's one of the things that has always bothered us as Jets fans is that the coaching staffs, and this is multiple coaching staffs, this is not just the Sala regime, but the coaching staffs tend to just kind of stick to what whatever they think is best, like, what, whatever their scheme is, they just stick to it. And it like that line in Remember the Titans where somebody asks Coach Boone about his offense and he's like, I run four plays. It's like Novit King, give it enough time, it works every time. Like that's kind of how the Jets have been run for a long time on offense and defense. It's like we do what we do and we're going to keep doing it and eventually it's going to work. And oftentimes it doesn't work. Um, but with the defense, traditionally it has. And so them, for them to s- kind of adopt a different approach here, which is almost like very – New England Patriots-y with, with the way the Patriots have played for the last 25 years was like they came into this game with a totally different custom defensive game plan for what they knew was true about the Patriots and what they were going to see, which was like, hey, the offensive line's weak. Brissett is not going to be able to really push the ball down the field and everything's going to be about Ramondre Stevenson. So let's just jam the line of scrimmage and let's send, you know, eight people on some plays and let's really like simulate pressure other plays. So we make them think that we're coming and then we back off and sit in coverage. And so it was really, really fun, different game plan. And I'll touch on the Will McDonald thing too. Like, you know, I'm not saying that he was ready to play last season. I, I, I don't know what the truth is here. Um, but he was drafted to be a situational pass rusher and we didn't have any of those situations last year. We didn't, we didn't get big leads on anybody where we could put out a speed rusher and say, just go, just go get the quarterback and have fun, go nuts and do your spin move and do what you need to do. And so like, I wonder if had we had more of these situations last year, had we, would we have seen a greater snap share from Will McDonald? Would we have seen a better stat sheet from Will McDonald? Or did he need that time? And now we're also getting the situations. I'm not really sure, but I know that we didn't have the situations last year. So it's nice that we're at least putting him in a position to be able to do what he does this year. And it's it's really, really encouraging to see him have five and a half sacks through three weeks. Um, and then the, the one last thing I'll say is that we have the opportunity to break a little uh, news here. Um, it's not big news, but they signed Jalen Mills, former Patriots and Eagles cornerback to the practice squad. I'm not really sure what that's about. There's no injuries to my knowledge. Um, Maybe it's just a totally depth practice squad signing, but it's kind of a well-known name to bring onto your practice squad. So that's interesting. We'll see what develops there. Look at that. You getting in on the insider business as well, coming from Will's spot. Um, No, it's a great, great call about Will and Mac. And I think another player, we had talked about this before we hit the record button, but another player to call out has just been, Jamie and Sherwood and his development, I think, uh, especially with CJ down, that's allowed him to step into a bigger role and he's really flourished. So, uh, you know, if he can continue his development at that linebacker position and really is like, I think it was a fifth round pick, sixth round pick, like converted safety. Uh, converted so, safety you know, at a Auburn. You know, yep. I, I know they took a bunch of those converted safeties and obviously like Pinnock has been, really great at corner for the giants or at least serviceable. And that's one that got away. Um, but you know, the plan was to take a bunch of those safeties and see if Sala could work his magic. And I think a lot of people kind of expected that to happen overnight and Sherwood's in like year three or year four now. And to see us reaping the benefits of one of those, you know, later round dart throws has been a really encouraging sign for the defense. Totally. And and look, Nasraldine didn't work out, but you didn't need both Sherwood and Nasraldine to work out. You just needed one of them, right? And one worked. So it's it's really awesome to see, especially with CJ Mosley down. Yeah, that's the point of the draft. It's a it's a lottery. It's a crapshoot. Everyone always says the draft is a crapshoot and you're taking tickets. Eventually some of them have to hit. And it didn't happen right away necessarily, but good to see this hit down the line. Um, All right, let's bounce around to some news around the league. I'm going to do this a little bit out of order from how we talked about, but um, just taking like a macro picture of the league. uh, One thing that has been evident through three weeks is just quarterback play and passing has just been down significantly overall um, for the league. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up is uh, a, the, you know, the league shift is, Obviously, you know, the Mel Kuyper thing went really viral this week with like 
eliminate too high. And like, this is just a natural ebb and flow of the way like defenses have been trying to limit explosive plays for years. The offenses are adjusting to that defensive shift and really leaning into the run game and saying, if you're going to give us these chunks, we're going to take it. I think it's one of those natural ebb and flows of the NFL. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is a, um, it's a really good year to have drafted two running backs, even when you already have a stud and to have invested heavily in offensive line. I don't necessarily know that the jets were extremely forward thinking and predicting this league shift, but it seems to have worked out in their favor. And I will say like, overall, this league shift has been, you, you mentioned how the jets could be like stuck in their ways. Well, like the, somehow the league has started shifting towards the jets where we will, we're a team built around. We're going to have competent quarterback play that can beat you in select spots if they are there, but isn't going to try and do anything too risky. We've invested heavily in offensive line. We have a suffocating defense and we have one of the best run games one of the best one-two punches in Brees Hall and Braylon Allen, Braylon Allen in all of football. So, you know, I'm seeing this shift around the league and it's making me incredibly optimistic for the Jets' future. How has the play around the league impacted how you view this team so far this season? Yeah, I have a bunch of thoughts here. I'm trying to organize them in my head before I just start word vomiting. But first Go of off, all, King. the the, Kuy- the Kuiper take is 